What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson. Welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So, it is actually early morning today. Uh, it's Saturday. That's usually when I film. And we're going to be messing with the Malibu. If you're not familiar with this car, this is my Turbo Chevelle that, ha that I have a love-hate relationship with. I spend more time working on it than I do kind of driving it. But we are close to getting back in the driver's seat. Um, it's just a matter of a couple more things. And then we're going to take it over to the dyno and put this thing back on the rollers, line it out. And my buddy Boogeyman has a Camaro and uh, he put down over 600. And my original goal when we put the turbo and stuff on this and the intercooler was to make six. And I didn't get there. So I just got to beat Boogeyman by one horsepower. Then we're good. I don't even really need more horsepower than 600 because that's kind of ridiculous at this point anyway with my little baby tire. But just for the sake of fun to line the uh, tune out and because we're gonna be there anyway. Let's see what we can do. But before we get that far, we get carried away. There's a couple things um, I'd like to do to this. So we get on the rollers, we can actually do some uh, decent passes, I guess you would call it, or decent pulls. And then um, I also wanna see where this turbo runs out. So we're gonna do two, two things today before we head over to the uh, KP Fab and Tune, my boy over there, Kike, to dyno this thing. So. The very first thing we're going to do, last time I was on the rollers, the reason I didn't make 600 was fuel issue. A lot of you guys, if you're going to take a car to the dyno, you're probably going to run out of fuel. Pump or injector, uh, most of the time, is what shuts the program down. Well, in my case, I had a beast of a pump. It was a 4301. Um, now I have a 4303. But when we went and the pump had the issue last time, or I thought the pump had the issue, I actually had a plugged fuel filter. And I cleaned it, and a fuel filter is one of those things. It's out of sight, out of mind. It was making 60 pounds at the rail, but on the big end, it would run out. And, you know, Kiki's like, yeah, dude, you're probably done on fuel pump. Well, long story short, the pump or the filter was plugged. So what we're going to do today, I'm going to put a fuel pressure gauge before my post fuel filter, if that makes sense. So there's, there's a pre fuel filter that comes out of the tank. It goes into the fuel pump and then the pump goes into another filter, which filters it before it hits the rails. Long story, but we'll show you guys. Um, well, that secondary filter is a 10 micron. It gets plugged fairly easily. So without taking it out and blowing through it or pulling it apart and cleaning it, there's no way to really check to see how it's doing. Well, if I put a fuel gauge before it, if that pump is backed or that filter is backed up, the pump will have a harder time pumping fuel through it and that gauge will go up. Um, more so than the gauge I have up front or my Holly shows me. So that'll be a telltale sign. Hey, your fuel filter is dirty. You need to pull it, clean it and uh, not wasting time on the dyno making pulls that we're never going to end up accomplishing. And then the other thing we're going to install aside from that today is I want to monitor back pressure on my turbo because I have a $150 GT45. I'd like to run it out and see where it runs out of boost. It's a fairly small turbo. I think it's like 60 something millimeter. The, the housing and stuff looks big, but it's really not a very big turbo. I'd like to see where its efficiency lies. Um, I've had it up to like 15 pounds on the dyno. Now it's for like a split second, but I want to monitor back pressure and see if that thing can live there um, or if we can push it a bit more because whatever we can push it to, that's where I want it to live it, in its little happy zone is where it needs to be. At a one to one, all the way up to like a one and a half to one um, is all you can really do over that. It's not efficient, you're gonna run it out and then you can have more problems because of that. So, it is early. My number one helper, say hi to everybody. Hi. Number one helper is here, he brought SpongeBob and Patrick. We're gonna get started. I'm basically just gonna pull the car over. <clears throat> We're gonna start in the back with the fuel because I have to run it and obviously I don't wanna touch the exhaust after it's hot. So I'll pull it over. We'll do the fuel stuff in the back. I'll show you what I was talking about, the fuel gauge and all that fun stuff. And I've got a simple solution for that from G&J once again, those guys are amazing. And then once we're done with that, hopefully the exhaust cools off enough and I can go rummage through my fittings to figure out how I'm gonna plumb in uh, the pressure sender that I got. Oh, and I got a pressure sender and I'll give you guys a link because you are always asking me what transducer pressure senders I'm using. So I found one, I bought it, it came in. That's what we're gonna put on here. If it works, I'll give you guys a link and then you'll know where I buy them. Let's get started. I think if you put your finger on here, you can you can write on it. Let's see you write your name with your finger. W E S. Nice job, my man. <laughs> Oh, the 
parts, not that part. It is these parts. So this thing is really cool. So I got a dash eight feed. So I don't know if you can see, it's just an adapter. But you just screw into this side. It gives you an eighth inch MPT and then that screws back in. So you basically just cut this in the line. It gives you a little eighth inch port. And then I got a little gauge, just like the one that's on my up front for the most part, on my regulator, that will tell me. Bubble wrap button. There you go, there's bubble wrap, dude. So there, it'll tell me what the fuel pressure is. So, put this into here, cut that in the line in between before my fuel filter, and we are gonna have fuel pressure um, in the back, and this will tell me if my filter's plugged or not. Here's our fuel filter we put in. Last time we had this big open stretch and this is the pump. So what'll happen is when this is pumping, if this is plugged, it's gonna be a restriction. So it's gonna back up in this line. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna put this bad boy in line. That way I can glance underneath here and go, oh, I've got, you know, 80 pounds or 70 pounds, whatever back here. And then I know coming out of this regulate net, up front is at 60 pounds is what my regulator set at and then with vacuum monitor it's even less so i can just compare this gauge to the front gauge so this thing shouldn't raise the fuel pressure very high if it's not plugged if it's not plugged it should flow through fairly easily and this gauge should almost match the front gauge this is always going to be a little higher because this is a restriction but it shouldn't be crazy and if it starts getting crazy that means it's plugged so eventually all right i made a mess Clean it up. Let's just stay here. Now easy to cut this down on that line. Reflare it, put it back in, and we'll move on to the next adventure. All right, here's my cut mark. This is my tubing cutter. Real quick tip with this. You put the little cut knife wheel on there. And you tighten it up, and then just a couple turns. So it's still free wheels pretty easy. And then like another like eighth of a turn is kind of what I do and then I'll spin it until it, it starts freewheeling like it'll be hard to turn this and then it gets easier once it kind of makes a cut it's just like a little pizza cutter wheel that's all it's doing another little turn spin it another little turn spin it so if you do it like this versus like a caveman your cuts gonna turn out like a lot cleaner Okay. So we don't have a big burr, big edge on there. There's a little bit, fold it over, but if I really cranked it, that whole thing would fold in and it'd look terrible. So deburr this, I'll show you guys how to flare it. That's what this bad boy is for. This is actually was a cutter like this, but it broke, but I kept it because it has this little tool. So you take this and then you just run it, you push on it along the edge and that cleans up the edge. So uh, I'll do that real quick and bring you guys back when we flare it all right so we got our edge in there nice and clean there's not really an overhang or anything like that and then first and foremost the most important part is your fitting ends and caps and all that stuff i can't tell you how many times i flared a piece and then when like oh i forgot the collar of the nut so and then like on this one this goes to this side because it fell off so make sure that's on go in the right direction so we got that connection then you want your collar first Oh, see where it screwed up. You want your collar, this piece, or the nut, and then the collar. Because what it does is this pulls over that, and that's what creates the pressure against that flare. So make sure they're in that order. See, I already, it's already screwing up trying to talk to you guys. Then what we'll do is we'll load it in here, and then we will flare it. These are your different sizes. And then you just want to go until it's flush, and I'll show you an easy way to do that. You find a flat edge like that, and you push it down. And then you can twist it. There you go. Now you're flat. And you tighten it up. It's flat with the deck surface here. Like that. Um, it is time to flare it with this guy. But to any good flare, you need some grease. So let me go get a dab of grease, even though that has a little bit on it. I used to try to use WD-40. 
Uh, grease is much better. So you don't need just a little bit like that. And what this will do, this helps with the friction and it'll give you a nice smooth, and obviously this, I'm doing it all one hand in. So I'll just put that around the cone. That boy locks in like that. Snug it down and that's it. You tighten it down. This is a single flare, it's a 37 degree flare for AN fittings. And you just tighten it until it bottoms out and you'll feel it. Right when it bottoms out, it's soft aluminum. So you don't need to hulk this thing because you'll end up splitting it. Back it off, turn it. And drum roll. Dun, 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 dun. We have a nice flare and you can see the edge is nice and smooth. That's just a little grease. See how it's shiny? That's because we put the grease on there. There's no edge on it, so that's going to create a nice seal um, against that fitting. So, that is it. That's how you do an AN style flare, boys and girls. All right. Fire back up, check for leaks. That's our new setup. So, plug the battery back in, we'll fire it up, check for leaks. See what kind of pressures we're getting before this guy. Technically, since I had that off, I guess I could have, should have cleaned it, but let's just see. I haven't run it very long. It shouldn't be plugged, but I guess we're gonna find out right now. So, fuel on. All right, let's go fire this thing up. See how we go. All right, so I have my regulator set at 60 pounds and then with the vacuum, it drops down like 53. Um, I have it set at 60 though. And then the gauge was showing like five pounds more, give or take. It was showing dead nut 60 at when I had the vacuum plugged in. And then obviously my system was seeing 63, but that was, I have regulated 60. And then so it's roughly, I want to say seven pounds off, six pounds, Probably about six pounds, give or take. So I don't know if that is acceptable fuel range or not. I guess, cause we are going to the dyno. I could drop that thing and clean it just to be doubly, triply sure that things are cool. So let me pull that, check the filter, try to blow through it, make sure it's cool. Um, and then we'll move on from here. But that could be it. I mean, it's 10 micron. So I don't know if that's, that seems like a pretty big swing. So we'll pull the filter just to double check so that way we can have a clean slate, so. I right, cracked it loose because that takes two hands. Pull it out, here's the element. It's got some crud on it, but it don't look too bad. All right, we'll clean it off. We'll throw it back in. And uh, actually I'll do one better. I got a new one. Yeah, so we'll do. So instead of me having to clean it, we'll just replace it. That way I have a brand new fresh one. And I bought that on purpose so we could service it. So we'll replace it, put it back in, then we'll see what the fuel looks like. Eventually.
All right, we learned something. So it was still up five pounds. And so that's what it takes to push it through that, that uh, micron, I guess, that 10 micron. She lose about five pounds worth of fuel pressure uh, through that bad boy. So that tells me the other filter, we're at like six. So that thing is still uh, good to go. My, you know, I'll just clean it up, but now we're good. Now I know it's a five pound difference. I'm gonna write that down because I know I'm gonna forget, but we'll double check that, make sure there's no fuel leaks and then we will move on. I'm excited that we have that. Now I have a way to reference and know if my filter's dirty or not. I don't have to pull it and leak fuel and try to clean it and guess voodoo um, if I'm having issues with the tune. It's an easy way to check to make sure that my fuel system is clean. So I'm excited about that.